Hey everybody, this is Tony and I'm here today with a special guest, none other than actor, singer, author, uh, a man who really does it all, Mr. Teron Brooks. How you doing today? I'm fantastic, Tony. Nice to meet you. Yes, yes. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, of course, you know, this, this past year has been a, a very uh, dramatic and, and, and turn twisting and, and everything else a uh, year for everybody. Uh, but how have you, you know, managed to get through this uh, unexpected time, I would say? Well, a lot of grace, man. I think a grace for what I don't, couldn't do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and then receiving grace for the things that I actually did. Because even in the pandemic, I was actually able to be productive and creative when I wanted to. And then <laughs> when I couldn't. Right. Uh, when I just when I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, so it was a lot of grace and a lot of uh, acceptance. I think a lot of growth. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think sometimes we're so busy that we only have a few seconds to feel what this life is all about. And this last year, we had many, many more moments to actually feel it. And yes, most of it was painful and most of it was hard. Yeah. Um, but I think there was a reserve of strength that maybe we didn't know we had to, to get us through. And I think mm -hmm. that's the only way you know that you can get through something is if something happens where you actually need to use the lessons you've ever learned or the faith or anything. And if those things don't happen, you know, I guess we call them tests. You don't really know how strong you are, you know? <laughs> yeah. um, and I think going back to what I said about the grace, it's fine if we discovered that we weren't as strong as we were or we are, but knowing how life rolls, even though we're stepping into a whole, hopefully better situation, mm -hmm. I think in the back of my mind, I'm like, let me keep sharpening my faith and my strengths because I know something's going to happen, you know? That's right. That's uh, right. So I think that's kind of where I was just a, a year of grace and trying to, you know, if you got that grace for yourself, you can't help but give it to other people. And I think right. that's the problem that we don't have grace for others because we don't give it to ourselves. Yeah, know? yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't I don't think a lot of people even thought to just slow down, you know? And when this happened, it was like, wow, I really been, you know, in this, in this uh, uh, hamster wheel of life, you know, trying to go nowhere really, you know? And, and, and then you think about it and you're like, wow, okay. So what can I do now to change that, you know? now that I have the time to actually do it, because you know, we always say, oh, I, I really don't have the time right now. You know, that's most of oh, our yeah, excuse. Absolutely. So it's like, you have the time now, so what are you gonna do with it, you know? So I was really, for me, I know that is one of the things that I was grateful for, uh, uh, you know, a lot of uh, deaths and tragedies happened, uh, of course, due to the virus. But for me, it has actually been a good thing beyond, you know, the bad stuff. It has been a good thing, you know, because I got a lot of stuff done. Um, even with doing these interviews and, and, and everything else. So I was just really grateful in a way, um, not only for work, but just for life, you know? So Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the yeah, quality yeah. of life is different. Too. Absolutely. A lot of people are, are, are more uh, conscious now, I would say probably, uh, or at least it seems, you know, but we'll see how things continue to pan out once they open back up those. But uh, yeah, speaking of that- see. Speaking of that kind of stuff, though, I know you're getting ready to release a new single um, tomorrow uh, on May 7th. So tell me about this single uh, and what did you, you know, put into this that wasn't already in it? And why did you decide to record this song? Well, the song is coming from a whole record that's called The Soul of Broadway. So we uh, took some songs from the Broadway stage, um, right. which I'm familiar with. Uh, and we wanted to create a, a record or an experience where the listener wouldn't have to relate the songs to a show or a character. So okay. um, most of Broadway, the whole magic of, broad, uh, of Broadway is the storytelling right. and the connection when you hear these Broadway songs, no matter what they are in the show, they, they connect with people. So I said, let me pick some of these iconic songs and really almost rebelliously <laughs> and reimagine them my way. So it still feels like a Tehran record, which I love, like a record right. that I would do. It doesn't feel like a, it's a Broadway record, but you know what I'm saying? It still has my artistry on it. And what would happen if people say people don't go to Broadway, say that's not their cup of tea. Maybe they've not seen that show. Mm -hmm. Making it not matter. 
Um, and so tomorrow is from Annie. It's the son of the, the redhead little girl song she sings in the show. <laughs> um, so no hair and black, you know, we thought <laughs> this change it up, you know. And uh, the story about tomorrow is that it was actually the last song we recorded for the album. And then when I got signed to Mercia Records um, and they're distributing um, the soul of Broadway, they chose Tomorrow, which was the last song that almost didn't make the record. Wow. Um, so yeah, it's just, and fittingly, we're coming into a new day. The sun is coming out, you know? Um, so I think the song will resonate with a lot of people, hopefully. Um, so we're excited with this new release. I got signed in a pandemic, you know? Yeah, so I always yeah. say anything could happen. Uh, we started we started our launch for the solo Broadway in 2019. We did one show and then everything was shut down. So it's wow. just like a we had a big pause and then now we're like another resurgence of it. So really excited about it and hope people re receive it well. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure they will though. You have a a, a special kind of way of taking on uh, not only taking on but creating music. Period. Um, and I don't think people really realize that though looking at you uh, as an actor, I think a lot of people probably look at you as, uh, and I even heard some say he sings. And I'm like, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, there's more than one thing to do in life. But so, you know, you, you just have a different way of doing things. And that's what I really respect about your music. Um, you even have a single wrong that you put out this year too. Um, it was a single that I like because it's really like a self-reflective uh, kind of thing, you know, to say, are, are you wrong? You know, and I was like, wow, okay. So it was a different kind of way to put a spin on something that is almost negative to people, you know, Absolutely. but to say, are you looking at yourself in your situations? You know, and I, I really like that. Um, but talk to me about the creative process of, of creative music. How do you come up with songs like Wrong and, and just go through these, uh, you know, situations in the song? Because you don't just do a song, it's normally telling a story. Yeah, well, normally the story is my story to tell first. I have to tell it to myself. Or I have to re realize it for myself. And what I've learned is not to be embarrassed or ashamed of the truth, yeah. you know? And I've just been like, wow, if I can tell the truth and help somebody else tell the truth and make it less painful, because I believe that music is almost like medicine. So right. you take your medicine then even with a song like Wrong, where it has a negative connotation, but if I can get to the to the bottom of why I might be wrong, if, if, if all these excuses that I'm making could be myself, mm -hmm. what comes on the other side is so much healing and wholeness that it's worth it sometimes to go into these darker places. And I feel like I can be an example for people to do that, to say, you know what, it's okay, you know, life is messy. And so every song normally um, begins with me. You know, yeah. and then I just say, hey, do I have the courage to share it, to say it first? Because you never want an artist to tell you what you need to do. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> you don't include, don't include themselves. It sounds right, like, right. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, a lot of my messages, if you don't know me or follow me, you could think, well, is this guy doing that? You know, he's saying a lot. I try to live up to the, to the music as much as I can so it can be authentic. Um, and to let people know it's still a journey. It's not like, oh, I realized this, I, I, I'm all better and I did this. Yeah. I'm still processing it. Every time I got to sing it or every time I got to hear it or talk <laughs> about it, I'm like, oh yeah, man, that's you, you know? Um, exactly. So, so I think that's how I start. My, my inspiration is always from God. Like it always just kind of comes to me. Um, mm -hmm. I never spend a labor not that, not that I don't spend time on my music, but I don't labor with music because it's usually just, uh, I'm inspired. I'm like, I have to write the song. I got to finish it. it. I see something. Um, that's my process. It's different for everyone else, but usually it, 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 something that I see, something that I experience, and then I turn it over into music or any other form of art um, because I do, I want music to communicate. You know, I yeah. want everybody to love the production. I want everybody, you know, I guess to, love the artistry mm -hmm. but mostly most important is that it communicates lyrically it says something um to people i i really i really want that and i think the freedom of being an independent artist is that you know nobody's right. telling me what to do and how to do it uh now <laughs> maybe later uh and i i like i like the freedom of that expression 
Because, yeah, I mean, it, it could be a risk and people could not like it, but what's the worst thing when someone has to tell you what to do as an artist and you do it, but you're not in it and it does not succeed, right? You feel a certain kind of way. It's better to do what you feel, what you love, and then well, however the chips fall in that way, it's just better um, that way. So I've always kind of tried to have a hand in it, but I love collaborating. Uh, Wrong was collaborated by my friend, Zach Pro, uh, Provost. Okay. And uh, I have collaborators for tomorrow as well. So it's good to have what you think is good, but some other people <laughs> who are better than you <laughs> to say, nah, it's <laughs> not that good. You know? Right, right. And, and to trust them, but be also able to communicate, you know, as a leader, I suppose, what, what happens in your mind. I, uh, recently, I have a podcast coming up. Maybe you'll talk about it. Um, yeah. And we wrote a theme song my longtime collaborator, Sylvia McCullough, we wrote a theme song and I had it so much in my head and she nailed the production. And, and that's kind of rare when somebody gets it exactly like, whoa, you know. Right. Um, I love it when it happens. When that happens. Yeah. I, I wonder for you, I know a lot of people are, are, are different, but I wonder for you, like when you approach music, is there like a specific way that you're going at it to say, I want this to be an R&B record. I want this to be a pop record. I want this to be an inspirational record. Or do you just go in and create and say it is what it is? Wow, that's a good question. I think, you know, it took me a long time to figure out what my genre was. And I right. think the reason why is because I don't have one. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I, love, I love so much. I love country music. I love soul. I love pop music. I love the singer songwriter genre. I love Broadway music. I love so much, you know. Um, so I think when I'm approaching a record, it, 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 whatever serves the song, I think I try to go, maybe that's the genre or maybe that's the music. Sometimes I might have an example of another song. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it's blatant, like I know it's this, and sometimes it isn't. So when that collaborator comes in, that's kind of where that person comes in and says, it could be this. And if you're open, you might find yourself swerving to another part uh, or kind of genre that you didn't even know it was, but it fits the song so well. So trying not to be so close minded unless it was just like, this is it, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'm answering your question, but I, I think I think this being open one, but also listening, if something's hitting me saying it's this, mm -hmm. following that all the way through. But you know, I was talking to my producer the other day, we're about to start a new record, a new record. Um, okay. <laughs> and and I was giving uh, examples. It's like this, it's like this, it's like this, it's like this. And I was like, Tehran, you have to stop doing that because it needs to be like this. Right. It needs to be what I'm creating, you know, not that it can't be inspired, but I think that's the industry. What does he sound like? Who does he sound like? What is it like? <laughs> you know, we run to that so quickly. And I think at my age or at my, as long as I've been doing it, it's time for me to create something that sounds like me. You know, yeah, yeah. What is it? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I think it's a lot of artists now that you listen to, and it's 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 that kind of thing that you realize it's like I'm not really chasing something anymore. I'm just doing you know what feels right, and I think that's where the authenticness and and you know that kind of thing comes from. And people appreciate it more when they can really see, you know, that it's something true to you. And it's not just something somebody is saying, hey, go, in, go out and do this, you know, go and cover this song, you know, let's try to get a hit with this. But it's something that really means something to you. And you're like, okay, this has lyrical content in it. It has an actual message in it. It has something I have to listen to. Uh, you, I can play it for my family, you, you know, different stuff like that. So, and, and that's what your music is. And I, I think um, that's the beauty in being able to do that kind of thing without, you know, making yourself look or, or, or going in an area you really don't belong. I'll put it like that, yeah. you know, so I, I really uh, appreciate that. I want to talk about your book as well um, that you put out, Something Good on the Table. Um, yeah. You, you uh, basically, uh, I want to say put what you put in music in a book. Um, so how did how did this uh, idea come about for you, and, and why was it so important for you to write a book? Because you could have just did it in a song, but I love books too. Yeah, I plan on just doing it in a song, and then God was like, "You need to write a book," and I was like, "Huh?" <laughs> <laughs> um, so I basically I basically to answer your question, just obeyed 
I'm not sure <laughs> if it was something that I thought about or like I really wanted to do because I think when you think about I'm gonna write a book, it's very daunting. And what is what do you, what is that? What does that yeah. require? And yeah. what I what I felt was or heard was just to write every day. And this is a quote book for people who don't know. It's it's definitely, I wanted something to be bite-sized, to be on your table, something good on the table, and you could pick it up and open to any page and just have a bite size of a quote. I'm not, uh, I have plans on writing other novels, other kind of books, chapter books in the future. Mm -hmm. But this one was more just like, hey, I need something real quick, you know? And I, I do that as a lyricist. So in the book, um, I do have lyrics from uh, many of my songs. And then there's just bite size, and I and I, I put them in different chapters: faith, love, hope, peace. So you could kind of scroll and see what you might need for the day. Mm -hmm. um, and I just wrote for a year. And at the end of the year, December 31st, I put my pen down. I was like, "We got a book." It was just basically <laughs> that easy, or that um, stress-free. When I just put a time limit on it, and that's you know, I had to organize it. But right. The writing just if I just wrote every single day when I. Everything's inspired, man. I think it's hard for me. And I, I respect people that go, they got deadlines, they got to, you know, uh, rewrite and edit and make it the best that they can, which we all want. Of course. But for me, it just needs to be like inspired. I'm not going to force something that's not there. Yeah, yeah. You know? Absolutely. And when it's there, it can flow and I can write pages. And when it's not there, I just have to honor that. It's not there. <laughs> you know? <And> so. <laughs> Um, so the book is really a, a dream to be able to be an author and I'm, I'll be writing my new book soon. But um, yeah, that was kind of the, the, the impetus of, uh, of, of that book. It was just a dose of inspiration and like literally something good on your table and people can come over. What's this? And you just kind of pick it up at your leisure. Not necessarily you have to read the whole thing from cover to cover. Yeah, yeah. I really uh, like that a lot of people are starting to write more books too now. Um, and, and, and not necessarily books that are fictional, you know, but stuff that can actually help you uh, along the way that you might get encouragement with. Um, even uh, I have Tina uh, Lifford's book, uh, The yeah. Little Big Book of uh, Big Lies. Uh, I just ordered that not Ooh, too long ago. I that, yeah, awesome. yeah. I, I just little got book it. Of big lies. The Little Book of Big Lies. Yeah, I think I have it here. Hold on, let me see. Wow. Yeah. Um, it's this one. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's really goes hand in hand, like with the stuff that she's doing with the young, uh, as far as, uh, inner fitness and, and, you know, uh, stuff really to help you mentally and spiritually and physically, those kinds of things. So it really is, uh, eye opening to just read some of this stuff. And you're like, wow, I didn't really think about this kind of situation in that way, you know, but, um, I really, or appreciate the fact that a lot of people are starting to just be creative with the way that they write things now and, and inspire people more as opposed to just, you know, putting something out because anybody can write a book, really. Uh, I've seen it. <laughs> people want to know, I think, beyond if they follow you, right? Or if they, if they already uh, are inspired by some of your artistry, um, they want to know more about you, you know? Yeah. They want to know if it's real, you know? We want to have an in-depth uh, uh, experience. So when they go back to that music, when they go back to that, you know, art, I think they appreciate it more. When I think back in the day, the artists were so elusive, you know, you mm -hmm. couldn't touch them, you couldn't see them. It was so mis mysterious, you know? Yeah. That's not the case anymore. You have like stars in the world. Will Smith puts out inspirational content almost every single day with him in it and you get to see him, you know? Um, so I think that is a conscious, I know I'm consciously doing it now. I don't know if I love the word brand, mm -hmm. but I do understand that the more people feel me and see me and know what I am about is real, um, then when I do put something out, they can receive it in that same heart. And, and I try to make it that that the same person. You know, right. I understand where people create a certain image and stuff because they're doing different things. Yeah. But for me, I mean good or bad, it's kind of what you see is what you get. Because <laughs> that's my message. My message is that it will work in progress, you know, yeah. and I'm enough. So I don't have to dress it up. Like this is, this is, this is it, you know, right. It might not be the best forever, but this is it. And you're you, you know, so mm -hmm. that's kind of important to me to keep that brand uh, uh, really, really authentic as possible and even sharing with people what i'm going through right in the moment you know yeah. has been my um 
it's almost been saving for me because then I don't have to live up to something that's not real, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think after a while though, you start to realize that kind of stuff because like, if you look around now, a lot of people that come in the industry are really like trying to chase uh, the last person's success almost. And you kind of get caught up in that image and what that is and how it sounds and all that kind of stuff. And you, you know, you end up not being yourself. You know, they don't find a lane for themselves until later. And it's like, okay, well, that ship has already sailed. We're on to the next person now because you gave us somebody else, you know? So it really yeah. is important. And if you do that, bro, yeah, if Go you ahead. do that long enough, you get tired, you get tired. And then you're like, when you really want to try to be yourself, it's too late. <laughs> people, they love the other thing, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's never too late, but like you're saying you just, gosh, that's that's a slippery thing we see with a lot of stars that they're like wow that was something that was created by a machine by a label mm -hmm. by a group of people you know and somebody's trying to fight to get out a whitney houston right you know she, right she's trying to fight to get out you know um yeah, yeah. i'm glad that you said it that whitney is one of my favorite artists um but there's some, something i say all the time and people don't really understand all that you have to go through just to even reach that level of success and not only reach it, but to maintain it. And that's something, a totally different monster. I, I don't even think I will ever want <laughs> just because it's, it's too much, you know? Everybody can't handle that. Um, but the book though, Something Good on the Table, uh, I know it's available on Amazon and uh, where else can people get it? Is that the only place? That's the only place right now um, okay. because yeah, and with the pandemic and stuff, you know, but the, the Amazon will come right to your house. Um, if someone wanted me to sign it, I could probably send them a copy or whatever from, from me. But Amazon is the best thing. You self published and they do all the work for you. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. One of my favorite sites. I'm on there all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Also, stock in it, man. Because <laughs> listen, I, I, like I, I promise. Thing, man. I, I gotta, I gotta, you know, try to slow down now, you know, everybody, I'm like a lot of people now because we're working from home too. And it's like, you go and find stuff that you had in your cart from like a whole year ago. And then you're like, oh man, I think I should get this, you know, it's yeah. crazy. It's crazy. But I want to talk about the podcast. Uh, uh, though definitely you got coming out next month uh, as well. So you got a lot of things coming out. Um, Honest yeah. Answers with Teron Brooks is the name of the podcast. Um, so talk to me about the podcast. Uh, what are you going to be discussing on it and where can people listen to it? Uh, well, the podcast is going to be anywhere you get your podcast, Apple, okay. Spotify, wherever you get that. And that, that launches on May 18th. Yes. And my first guest is Leon from The Temptations. Okay. So uh, that will be like a reunion of all sorts of incredibleness <laughs> uh, because we don't talk all the time, him and I, and we had a great candid conversation. Um, but I've always wanted to do a podcast, but you know, like you're talking about with this pandemic, I don't know. It just seemed like a river of wanting to create and, and a river of need. That, yes. That's what, you know, you, you, you can create something cause you, you feel like you really want to do it, but is it necessary, you know? Right. And um, sometimes you have to listen to make sure that it's the right time. And I feel like God had really pointed me in the right direction. And so I've always wanted to do one. I called Sheila E. I called some friends, people, that I didn't even know they would say yes. And they're <laughs> so gracious. And you know, the, the thing about my podcast, man, is I wanted to do something that was not um, resume based. Yeah. We're not talking about what you've done and where you, all that. We're talking about who you are and what you think. And so the honest answers is just, I'm asking questions um, that everybody thinks about. Everybody wants to know the answer. And so I'm giving the guest uh, a chance to answer uh, something that we all think about. What is love? What is your purpose? What are you afraid of? What surprises you? What scares you? What makes you angry? What, you know? So it's these honest answers and we end up having these wonderful, wonderful conversations like we're having right now. These right. intimate conversations that I hope are compelling for people that they hear from these stars, something that they've not really heard from, uh, from them. Yes. So it's real, and after every one, we're done. Season one is done. So we're starting on May 18th. I've always just been so inspired and affirmed because these, you know, icons or some of them are friends. I, I respect, you know, right. And I admire, and I got to hear first before the audience, you know, <laughs> uh, 
just how they endure, how they how they uh, persevere, you know, the little yeah. nuggets, those things. And man, um, I tried to get myself out of the way as much as I can and facilitate what that was, but I didn't give the questions ahead of time. They didn't know what I was going to ask. And um, so I'm excited about that. So May, May 18th is the podcast, Honest Answers with Teron Brooks. And just also highlighting when you talk about honest answers, there's no answer that's wrong. Because okay. if it's your answer, no, I shouldn't be telling that you that that's not right. You know, that's right. That's wrong. <laughs> and we can evolve in those answers, but it's just like, hey, be free. What what do you think this is? And I think in our society right now, we rob people from their own thoughts. You know, because yeah. we think yeah. we know. You know, um, now inherently we know what's right and wrong, but I think it's an evolution of a human spirit to go, hey, I thought this one day, the next day I don't think this. I'm, I'm growing in my thoughts, but for right now, this is my answer. You know. Um, and I think if we do that, whether you're black, white, Hispanic, Asian, whatever, you know, we'll start to be more unified to say, you know what? I think the same thing. I thought the same thing. Mm -hmm. We're all having mm -hmm. the same ex uh, semi uh, different experiences, but or in perspectives, but we're having the same uh, trials and tests that everybody, especially with the pandemic, we were all sidelined at the same level, no matter how much money you had <laughs> or anything, you know, so. I think it's a perfect time. May is spring, so music and, and the inspiration and spring hopefully will lead us to the summer where we can step out from uh, all this darkness. You know? Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people, you know, are, are able to just really express themselves in different ways, uh, even with a lot of these podcasts and, and, and really just hear something different. You know what I'm saying? Because as opposed to long time ago, we, we really just had like radio or, you know, the mainstream people who were on TV to go off of. And now it's like, everybody can really just do this on their own now. And you can really get stories that you couldn't get before. And, you know, real truths, because sometimes, you know, as of course on TV, they block out stuff or radio, they block out stuff where, you know, when it goes to editing, they say, we don't want this, you know, so you really get to get the real when you have these conversations now, you know, and it's from your own heart, from your own mind, you know? Yeah. And I really I love to that. do that, man. Cause I, you know, doing your first one, you're there's so many to listen to and there's was so many opinions on how to be. And I was like, you know what? The less research, the better. Right. I just want to be, you know, we'll figure it out first season, second season, if we have to retweet something. But the most thing that I love about podcasts, if I love somebody is them being themselves. What you yes. don't want is to all of a sudden go to the podcast and this person's morphed into another thing that you didn't know they were because mm -hmm. that's not why you're listening is what's my point. So I tried to keep it real like I'm talking to you right now, you know, because I just didn't want to be formulaic with it where I had to model myself after something else or follow these rules. I think that's the whole thing about being an artist is you set the tone, you know. That's right. That's um, right. So, you know, that doesn't mean I won't learn and grow about the format, but um, hopefully people, and you know what, it's not for everybody and it's okay. That's another <laughs> thing I learned, you know? So it's, it's okay that everybody doesn't love it. Exactly. Know? If you create it in the mind to make sure that everybody loves it, which we would love that. Right. You might, you might sacrifice something beautiful because you're so focused on everyone as opposed to truth making it true, yeah. you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So definitely we got to uh, uh, check that out um, as well as the new music in May. Um, before I let you go though, of course, we got to talk about some acting because I, I would be crazy to not talk about it. Uh, but The Temptations is one of the most memorable roles uh, that you played, uh, the role of Eddie Kendricks, of course. Uh, it's It's been a long time, 1998, I think that was. Um, 1998. Yeah, when it came out. So it's been a long time. It's two years, what, younger than me. Um, <laughs> but how did that role impact your life? And, and how has it impacted your life? Because I'm sure it probably still is. Yeah, it, it has. I think what comes to mind first is that um, nothing's impossible. Because when I auditioned for that role, I did not have anything on my resume that would warrant me to being able to be the lead in a movie. You know? mm -hmm. um, and I went to the, that audition and in my mind, let me just go in here and sing for these people and, you know, say hi, you know what I mean? <laughs> let, them, let, let, let them put me in the files, you know what I mean? Right. And then to, to 
he received not only to get the part and be able to portray Eddie, but to be received by Smokey Robinson and these icons in such a uh, welcoming way. And then to do something that still matters, still shown all over the world. I can walk outside now and someone can see me. And it's not about being recognized, but of being appreciated for something that you've done. Um, it's just been a blessing. And it always reminds me in the hardest times of my life or the times <laughs> when things aren't going so great, Right. that anything is possible and the same god that made that happen is the same one that continues to like walk walk me through to my future so when when i get that question usually that what comes to mind is that anything's possible this this role reminds me of that i have yeah. to admit initially it would be hard to kind of <laughs> want to remove myself from that and be like no i'm not eddie i'm trying to do something else you know <laughs> uh, and and I had some bitter moments where I was just like, ain't nothing else. Hey, you want to talk about something else, you know? <laughs> um, but then you, and then you accept these one in a lifetime moments um, for what they are. And it's just, you know, all I want to do is connect with people. And that was the biggest platform as, as of now that I yeah. was able to connect with people with music and almost everything that I do to, to dance and to sing um, and to communicate. Um, I'll, I'll never forget that that experience and what that's taught me uh, and try and what I try to tell other people about that who think it's so natural, you know what I mean? I yeah. say, no, nah, you know what I mean? You, you just keep doing it, you know, that that role was for me. Mm -hmm. that, that's basically, mm -hmm. it, it, it was just for me, you know? Yeah. And so instead of, you know, worrying about what's not for you and, 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 <laughs> and being so upset about what you're not getting, you know, maybe you just could keep on preparing your heart and your soul for what's for you because it'll find absolutely you, you know and i remember one thing you know before we go is that the 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 executive producer really said it was my spirit that really sold it you know so if yeah. i were to go in there to be somebody else or something else i would have missed it you know right i always tell people bring you bring all of you in there because there's no if they're looking for something extraordinary and unique why would you change that from what yeah. you had? Yeah, it was absolutely something I would say. Um, I told somebody else this as well, but I forgot who it was now. But um, I told somebody else, you know, w those kind of situations you just happen to know is destiny when you see these kinds of things happen. And I know, of course, for you, like you said, you had some moments of bitterness because who wants to just be stuck in one thing when I'm continuing to work, I'm continuing to do other things that I want to really be appreciated for. But like you said, you have to get in that mindset and like, wait a minute, this is a blessing, you know? But those kind of things are something that's like almost one in a lifetime. And anybody who strikes it twice will really have really struck gold because yeah no matter what, I don't think there's nobody who has seen that movie who won't remember you for playing Eddie, you know, or any one of those uh, guys from Leon to the rest of the cast. It was just mm -hmm. something special because for one, everybody loves Motown. For two, it was something to see, you know, the inside story of or Motown, you know, you might not saw every single thing, of course, because it's TV, it's movie. Um, but you got to see some of the inside of what the actual group was going through during the recordings of some of our favorite records or, you know, situations or, you know, life moments. And you're like, wow, this is what was happening, you know? So what did you have to do or did you have to do anything special to prepare for that role of Eddie? Because obviously uh, Eddie wasn't here at that time. Um, so did you have to do anything special to prepare for that role to just really, you know, become him? Well, yeah, I think, you know, we studied as much as footage that we could um, talk to people that knew him, but I, I decided that I wasn't going to do an imitation. I was going to do more of an embodiment. I was going to do more of who is Eddie? Who, yeah. who is he? You know, and then try to figure out who I was at that young age and what are the characteristics that we have that we share that I could honestly and authentically bring to surface to be this man and i that's what i tried to do in my little inexperience but i didn't <laughs> want to imitate somebody how they talked and i wanted just to get inside of this man who was he you know he really loved justice he really loved fairness he really was a good good friend stuck up by his friends that's he right. really was a voice of reason 
Um, and I could identify with all those things. So then I was like, well, let me just be that. If I yeah. can just be that and magnify that in my own self, um, I think I can present Eddie. You know, they'll dress me and put the clothes on and all that. And um, and I knew a little bit of some of his mannerisms. And, and fortunately, I think I, you know, sound like him a little bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it was not an imitation. It was more of an embodiment. And it was more of a, uh, I just wanted to present the, the man underneath you know yeah, and i yeah. felt like everything else would take would take uh, care of itself yeah yeah absolutely the series ended up winning an emmy as well though um did you have any idea what was happening during the taping and and, and shooting of of the series itself did you ever think anything like that would possibly happen no i didn't i didn't realize i knew that it was exciting i had the most exciting time filming it but i didn't really process the response or what would happen um, for me or my career. I mean, I have to be honest, I guess I thought after it would be more. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'd be rich and famous, you know, everywhere. You know? <laughs> and that way, when you're young, you know, yeah, this is going to be something, you know, you have a little bit of those expectations and those hopes, but mm -hmm. um, I, I didn't really know. I knew that with me and the other four guys and really the whole cast that we had something uh, uh, special that we had a chemistry and that we had something real. Um, and I was excited about that. that. Um, but beyond that, no, could never imagine what was going to happen months later and years later um, to my life and to the life of other people. So, and sometimes those movies aren't as great too. You know, you just kind of yeah. like, they don't always turn out great, you know, the TV movies, because it was not a theatrical release. It was a TV miniseries. Right, right. But, he won the Emmy or uh, Alan for best directing because I do think he understood to weave these songs into the story and to make the songs part of the story and continue the story along instead of a song, a scene, a song, a scene. And so he brilliantly weaved all this in. So when we were singing something, it was about what was happening. Um, and you could see that with all the expressions and what was going on. <laughs> and I think that, that compelled or propelled the movie a little higher into its um way that it touched people because they knew the song from the radio right and now putting a story in it you know yeah, um and yeah. using the lyrics to to move the story along so i'm proud of it and, and happy that i was chosen you know yeah absolutely and i just want to make sure the vocal parts uh it, did everybody do the vocal parts for each character or only you well, we got the roles and then we had to audition to sing. So the role, getting the role was not um, predicated on the singing, even though I did sing at my audition. So okay. we got the role and then we had to audition to, to be able to sing. And I, I got to sing 90% of the film. Not okay. every actor sang everything or sang, um, but I, I was blessed. And most people don't know that that that, that was mostly me. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to point that out because I figured it was. But I want to make sure that people know. <laughs> but besides the Temptations, although it was a great uh, uh, accomplishment, I do want to make sure that I point out, though, that you have uh, numerous acting credits uh, from film, and you've done a number of Broadway, uh, you know, stints uh, from Lion King to Hairspray, uh, and a number of other uh, productions. You know, so just talk to me really quick, though, about Broadway itself uh, and experience of it, because it's totally different than TV and, and, and film, of course. Uh, but what has your experience been like during those different productions? And uh, is it more work? I'm sure it is. Well, yeah, the eight shows a week, the grind, the one one day off, two shows sometimes, um, the semi-monotony of doing it over and over and over and over mm -hmm. again, um, the discipline of the, the respect of the work, because you know, you're doing Lion King and you've done it 500 times, but that person's never seen it, right? That's right. So the commitment to pre 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 presenting something at the highest level for everybody is there. Um, for me, you know, it was just like, I'm not gonna even say a dream come true because I wasn't even thinking about no Broadway, you know? So a lot of the things that I've done in my life have been just gifts, you know? Wow. Um, and me being available and amenable to like swerving here or, or trying this or not holding on so tight to things because yeah. if I had my way, I, it wouldn't have had it wouldn't have turned out the way that it did. So, um, but yeah, you're on the Broadway stage and you're with the best of the best of the best of the best, you know. <laughs> um, but I always say, 
it's no different from other than the prestige, you know what I mean? And you spending five thousand dollars on a ticket, you know. <laughs> you know. I've done many shows that weren't Broadway shows that still felt the same. You know, you have this energy, and you still have to do the same work. You know, right? So I know a lot of people aspire to go to Broadway, and they think that's the pinnacle of everything. When I get there, it's wonderful, and I'm not downplaying that. But be Broadway everywhere you are. You know, do your right, and present that because it's not. You know, you still the small little theater spaces. It's in New York <laughs> City. You know. So um, I just always want to like highlight that. But for me, special time, special shows, because The Lion King in its cultural relevance to, you know, black kings and queens and, you know, mm -hmm. the culture is wonderful. And then Hairspray with the message of, you know, um, blacks and whites coming together and mm -hmm. my character being kind of instrumental in bringing those together. Um, I think that's important in, in line with anything that I want to do content wise that it's having a message of change and affecting people and making people think. So I'd love to go back to Broadway with something um, maybe original, you know? Okay. Yeah, I, I think that'll definitely be something good. Um, you're definitely proving yourself over the years to be an incredible, not only actor, but singer too. Um, and, and that's something that is not always, uh, you know, readily available. Um, you know, people like Jennifer Hudson now have, are, are going on Broadway and singing, and, and she's an incredible uh, talent, but it's always like, you know, we don't always get the opportunities that we should, I would say. Yeah. Um, but I do believe that things work out the way they should. So, you know, it, it, it happens the way it should. But I don't want to hold you uh, any longer because I know you got to go. So um, just let everybody know where they can find you on social media, uh, your websites, uh, if you have any, well, I know you do. And also reminder of the dates for the podcast and for the new single. Yes, sir. Tony, thank you so much. Um, uh, Instagram is Teron Brooks. Um, YouTube is Teron Brooks official. Um, subscribe so you can get all the videos. We have a lot of content coming out with the release of the single tomorrow, which comes out May 7th. The podcast, Leon being my first guest, is Honest Answers with Teron Brooks on May 18th. Um, and then Facebook is uh, Teron Brooks. And my website is teronbrooksofficial.com. Um, and reach out, because I really respond to people if they want to say hey and, 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 and chat with me. I really do. So reach out so I know you're there. And share the music and share share the love and share the message if you can. So. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is none other than the one and the only Mr. Teron Brooks. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. Bless you, man. No problem at all.